Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. Have you ever dreamed of retiring to an off-grid tiny home in the woods? Well, in this week's episode, we're gonna meet Patrick, who is doing exactly that. Patrick's self-built tiny home comes with ample outdoor space, a beautiful vegetable garden, a custom bathtub, and so much more. And while he's giving a tour, he'll explain how he was able to build this beautiful oasis on his own land. But before we get started, if you like videos like this one where we showcase stories of people living alternatively, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hi, I'm Patrick, this is Barley, and welcome to my tiny house. Ten years ago, I started looking at tiny houses and bought the plan set from Tumbleweed. It was very therapeutic for me just to, after work, go out and work on the tiny house. So I've been doing minor construction my entire life. My dad introduced me to various aspects of construction, but when it came to the tiny house, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. So I learned about framing, I learned about insulation and drywall, and I just took my time and it worked out well. So 10 years to build the tiny house, I was running a business at the same time. And so there were weeks, if not months, where I didn't touch it while I was working on the business. And now it's time to retire. I moved the house from California and then I moved onto the property here last March. As far as cost, I didn't keep accurate records, but overall, I'm guessing that it came in under 30,000 because I did so much reclaimed wood and all the labor myself. The big picture here on the property is I am going to build a 24 by 40 foot shop, two story, and then eventually a 800 square foot home. Welcome to my tiny house. It is a model made by Tumbleweed. It's 18 feet long, eight feet wide, and about 13 and a half feet tall. At the time, there weren't companies building trailers for tiny houses. It was, this was uh, 2014. So I used a trailer which was called a car carrier, and that's what it's built on. It had the capacity of 7,000 pounds, but after I got done, I got it weighed, and it was just below 10,000 pounds. So I had to put new axles on and leaf springs to bring it up to 12,000 pounds, so it's in good shape now. The property is fairly unique. On one side, there's a salmon stream. Every winter, coho salmon spawn in it. It's awesome to go down and watch them. The property is five acres. It's about a mile away from electrical utilities, so it's off grid. In order for me to build on this property, I have to put in a septic system and a well. Because I'm off grid, I needed a structure to house the inverter and batteries for that system. So this shed was built first before I had the tiny house here. Over here we have uh, propane. These are 40 pound uh, propane tanks. During the winter when the sun doesn't shine, I have to use a generator to create electricity. And so and this is a dual fuel. It uses either gas or uh, liquid propane. And I chose liquid propane, it's a lot cleaner. The deck is made from cedar. I use cedar siding also, but we use a technique called shoshugiban where I take a weed torch and flame the wood. That increases its resistance to pests and disease, and then I oil it after. So I did this both on the shed and on the tiny house. This is my dog, Barley. She's a husky, and it's pretty warm today, and she's got a lot of fur, don't you? So we hang out here, I eat out here, she sleeps out here at night. And it's nice to have a covered roof when you go between the house and the shed. So I have the EcoFlow Delta Pro with its extra battery. 
The EcoFlow, it's the heart of my electrical system. It only puts out 120 volts, and my well pump requires 220 volts. And so what I found was a step-up transformer, which will take the 120 and go to 240, and it's working great. I have a compact washer. I'm able to dry my clothes during the summer in the sun. It takes literally an hour. And in the winter, I have a small little rack I put next to my wood stove, and it, it again, it doesn't take long for it to dry. So this has worked great. In my shop here, I've got a lot of tools and a very small space. So I um, found the, this French cleat system where you have a 45 degree angle uh, and the opposing 45 degree on the wall, which allows me to create these uh, holders for my tools and uh, gives me mobility to move things around. For the past year, I've switched my diet to pretty much plant-based, and a garden was an essential, especially with food prices going up. So uh, luckily, I have great sun and good soil. I've got beets, carrots, chard, lettuce, all kinds of spices, beans, tomatoes. I got cucumbers and maybe even some corn coming later. So for water, I have a 360-foot deep well, um, but it's low capacity. That means there's not a whole lot of water at a particular time. So uh, it gets pumped when it's full up to a tank, storage tank, and then when I use it, it just comes from the storage tank. So it's been working really well. Waste water, I have both black and gray water. That's going into my septic system right now. So it enters into a pipe and then goes down the hill to where the septic is. The water system uh, is from the tank down and then I have a hose that's insulated for winter freeze and that goes to the tiny house. The windows are Milgard. I use the um, awning style window because of the rain here. I can open up the window and the water doesn't come in. It hits it and goes down. You can also see the redwood siding that I used the Shishugiban technique on. And that this was all recycled. A barn on, on my, the property of my old shop, we tore down and we found these beautiful redwood beams in the floor. And a good friend of mine, Christopher Shepard, has a cabinet company and a bandsaw and I was able to cut the, the siding out of these big beams. And using a shaper, we put a shiplap uh, joint on each, on each side, and that's how we, we put it together, and it came out really nice. For my solar panels, I went with Renogy 320 watt panels. That works well to give me the power I need. So this is my utility closet, my fresh water, enters here. I've got a filter set up there. And then this is the Renai on-demand hot water system. Again, I've got a 40-pound propane tank. I have to fill this probably once every five months. So it, it's, not, it's not a whole lot of propane and it, it heats up pretty nicely. I had my friend Chris Shepard do this door for me, which came out really nice. And doors are a big issue. If they're not built right, they warp and expand and contract over time. And he did a great job where the expansion and contraction is hidden inside the framing here. So anyhow, it's been beautiful. And I used a company in San Diego to do the, the stained glass, and that worked out really well. So the square footage comes in at about 190, pretty darn small, but it's very well planned out and for the past almost year, it's been a great space for me. Inside the framing is a closed cell insulation. I got prices for companies to do this and it was pretty expensive. I ended up buying a kit and did it myself and probably saved about $1,500. All of the fur again came from the barn that we tore down, and it's old growth, it's beautiful. I used a three and a half inch tongue and groove inside paneling in pine, and then I decided to use whitewash instead of just paint. And whitewashing is taking paint and diluting it down with water, because that allows some of the grain and irregularities to come through, uh, which I felt worked with the recycled uh, trim a lot better. Over here, there's a couch area slash guest bed. I built this with storage in mind. This slides out. 
I have a panel that comes in on top of it and I take this cushion and go on top of that and it becomes a pretty darn good bed uh, for a guest. Up here is a uh, secondary loft that I use for storage. I've got a bean bag and my uh, wireless printer up there right now. I have more storage under this section. So that just flips up and quite a bit of storage under there. I saw on the internet different ways of doing fold up tables and came up with this one here. This just slides up and I've got a pipe here with a threaded coupler and that produces a very sturdy uh, tabletop and I'm able to sit here and do my work. I'm semi-retired from uh, Bohemian Stoneworks there in Northern California and we do precast concrete countertops, fireplaces, tubs, things like that. And so I'm still um, helping them out but in the process of uh, retiring from the company. This also can be my dining table. I've had three, three people around here pull a, a stool up and uh, it works well. For heating, I only went with the wood stove. I knew that my property had a lot of wood. This is a stove made by the company On Fire. It's called the Kimberly. It heats really well. I can also cook on it. So a lot of times I'm making a bean dish and um, I put the beans on here and they do great. With a wood stove, you need a hearth, and this is a concrete that I made, and it's about three quarters of an inch thick, and it does its job. We use recycled tongue and groove fur for the floor. You can see the imperfections in it, but I really like it. So in order to get to the loft, uh, the typical way is with a ladder that you have to move and store. I saw a video from a Dutch, I think it was Dutch, or someone in the Netherlands, a micro apartment, that had a uh, pull-out stair. And so I did the plans on that and made this, uh, this stair, which works out pretty good. So in the loft, I've got a queen-size mattress. It's only four inches thick, but it's fine for me. I originally thought I'd be spending more time up in the loft, but I don't. I just come up here and sleep, and it's a great place to sleep. All these windows I've got in here allows the cross breeze to come across me at night. I wanted to put a ceiling fan in the house, and, but what I found is with this 12-12 pitch roof, there wasn't uh, enough space for a typical ceiling fan, or, or I would have to drop it down so low that it'd be a hazard for tall people. So I found this beautiful one. It's shaped like the prop in a boat, and it's really cool. The key part of the stairs is that there's storage all around them. And um, these are drawers. I have kitchen supplies and clothes. So I use this as a closet. I've got a, uh, a hanger bar across in the back there. Just reach in and that works out pretty good. So my ceiling uh, it, between here, it's six foot eight to the floor. Uh, kind of tight, but again, I'm not a tall person, so it works out well. For storage, I buy a lot in bulk and then fill my jars. I built this shelf system, which allows me to hold multiple jars. Over here is a pantry. I decided not to put a door on it just because of the space, and it's worked out great. I have my dishes. I sacrificed some countertop space by putting this extra door in, but I just felt it was necessary. And it gives me the option of doing an outdoor kitchen on the deck out here, which I might do in the future. It really allows me, uh, also when I'm cooking, to open the door. And if I'm creating a lot of steam, it allows it to go outside. So for countertops, again, I use the concrete. It's what, what I've done for the last 20 years. And it worked out well. I've got an undermount, stainless steel, round sink, and it's worked well here. For cooktop, I didn't want to commit to a uh, integral cooktop in my countertop. So I went with uh, this Cuisinart induction double. It's 110 volts, which is great. It really does a good job. It, it does require quite a bit of power. So I usually do my larger cooking projects during the day when the sun's shining, so I don't drain my batteries at night. 
Um, during the winter, I can also use the wood stove to uh, simmer and cook things. The fridge is an under counter. It's a small one. It's like a dorm room fridge, I guess you would call it. And uh, it's worked well. I do have to defrost the freezer portion, which is a little bit of a hassle, but if I stay on top of it uh, once every four months, it's fine. Because space in these small, tiny houses is so important, I had a wall here which I utilized in putting these little cubbies. There's a, a stud underneath the siding in each one of these. It allows me to put in some spices and vitamins and things like that. Off to the right is the bathroom. Uh, I did a, a door that models uh, a Japanese tradition soji screen. I used uh, rice paper. It's a film that 3M creates, so on the back it's waterproof and on the front it has the rice paper, which is really cool. And this is a pocket door, so it slides in there like so. I decided to do a pocket door because there was really no room to swing a regular door. And I got so enthralled in making my pocket door that I thought, why not uh, take that same concept and create sconces with it? So I just found the light fixture that is hidden underneath and created, created these um, uh, rice paper sconces. So I always like a good challenge and I saw this challenge of creating a bathroom vanity for a very small space. So I came up with this one here. Uh, this is concrete again. Uh, it's all integrated and uh, it allows the plumbing to be hidden underneath. So I'm sure toilets are on everyone's mind who builds a tiny house. Uh, because I'm here in the future going to build a real home with the septic system, I just went with an RV toilet and it's really worked out well. It allows a very small footprint. So I kept the whole theme of the concrete going. Uh, I did uh, the shower wall panels. Our company has developed a very strong concrete mix that allows us to pour real thin. This is just 3 8 of an inch thick, which is pretty much unheard of with concrete. So I have the shower panels on three sides and then I did a concrete soaking tub. To validate that this would work as a tub, I actually built a wood mock-up first, which allowed me to uh, get inside and uh, to see how how it would work and I can get water up to almost the bottom of my neck uh, while I'm in the tub here. So moisture can be a problem in tiny house especially during the winter because when warm moist air finds a way to get out as soon as it hits the cold air outside condensation happens and if that's inside your wall it could lead to uh, dry rot and mold. Um, so I found these fans that uh, automatically turn on when the relative humidity gets above, I think it's 60%. So I just leave it on during the shower, it automatically turns on and pumps all that moist air out. And then I've got another one at the other side of the house um, to do the same thing. I've been quite surprised of how easy it is to live in a tiny house. My motto in building this was, I think I can do it. And it's just a matter of watching some YouTube videos and doing your homework and you can do it. It was fun. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you soon with another unique home tour.